rodent is being disposed of in a manner that is unpleasant. However, it's necessary as a part of nature. Unfortunately, they won't exist after this video. Yo, what's up, Lavish Exotics, man? I'm coming back with another feeding video for y'all, man. Today, I'll be feeding all of my animals, including some of my herbivores or my dogs. I know you probably don't see this that often, but my dog actually eats lettuce. So, uh, I'm gonna see if Squirt is willing to eat on camera for y'all. He's normally a little bit shy, so I'm not really sure if he'll eat for you all, but let's see. Nah, my little dude is a little shy eater. So like, if I put it in this cage, he may eat it. Let me see. He's like a little sleep, uh, sneaky night eater. They can eat, they, they eat green, but they, they can eat a decent amount for sure. So he's shy. Tortoises are not the most social creatures until they become like a little bit older. But for the most part, if you're not a tortoise, he's probably not gonna interact with you. But uh, I wanna show you guys my dogs too. My dogs actually like lettuce. So if y'all got some dogs that like lettuce, make sure y'all like this video. I got two dogs that eat like tortoises. Look at this. All right, get, get, get. Take yours, go, bye, go. Get, out, 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 get, get, get. Get your butt out of here, dude. All right, holla at you. Look really low butt. That was my tortoise and my dogs. I wanted to show y'all them eating some greens, but we're gonna start off with my boy Lucky. We're feeding him a rat pup. So I want y'all to see how he takes it down. Even as babies, they have the instincts to take down prey. They're born with it, so they don't really have a choice. An animal that doesn't have survival instincts will die. So they have to, you know, learn how to strike and um, have to be able to learn at a super fast rate. Otherwise, they won't survive. So you will see a baby ball python take down a rat like it's an expert, like it had a lot of practice. But this is instinctual. Hey, my little dude. So I want to say as well, viewers discretion is advised. If you don't want to see animals get killed by another animal, I completely understand and there's no obligation to watch this video despite I may thank you all for supporting my channel. However, I will be feeding rodents to snakes because this is what they would naturally eat in the wild. So you know, don't judge me. This is like wildlife taking place like in my room. But basically this will be happening regardless. So if you don't want to watch an animal get killed, I repeat, don't watch this. Making sure I'm disclaiming that to you all. But we're getting ready to feed Lucky. So I don't know if you guys can see in here, we got some baby rodents. Unfortunately, this is the part of keeping reptiles that we don't like to shed a lot of light on. So unfortunately, these are baby rats that are, you know, gonna go into the food chain. So unfortunately, they won't exist after this video. So I'm getting ready to grab the smallest one out of here so we can feed that to my boy Lucky and let's see his instincts take over. I wanna say once again, viewer's discretion is advised. I warned you. Lucky, look what I got for you. Lucky, take your time, okay? I taught you to not rush and eat your food like a savage. So take your time, okay? So they smell with their tongue. So you're gonna see those constant tongue flicks, which means I smell something. As you see them tongue flick, you're gonna see him get closer to the rat because he's using his tongue to locate the rodent. We're gonna let him key in on the rodent himself. Ooh. Viewer's discretion is advised. So this was the first euthanization of a rodent by a baby lesser ball python, but this is a part of nature. He knows Taekwondo. He can do a full takedown in his instincts. So these guys are like natural martial artists, basically. So now we're gonna feed my mangrove snake. So we're not gonna be able to see him eat on camera, unfortunately, because 
Well, she, because she's a shy eater. And she's not really a constrictor, and she's not a fully venomous snake, so I don't really even know how they kill it. I think they just grab it and swallow it. You know, smaller prey, basically. They don't take down big prey, because they kind of have a small neck. So I'm, I'm thinking they just overpower small prey and get a little bit of venom with the rear fangs on the way down, I'm assuming. So that's something I have to research. Anyway, I'm gonna just kind of leave this in the cage and let her do her thing overnight, and I'm gonna wake up, and poof, they're gonna be gone, so. So I'm gonna show y'all my main girl snake here. Let me grab a snake hook. This is a professional snake hook. So guys are using this for like green mambas, boom slings, puff adders, gaboon vipers, all type of snakes. So this is basically like a hundred dollar snake hook, but I was able to see it on Amazon for a steal. I got this for like 30 bucks, which was a steal. It has the grip. It even has the sweat resistant on it. So like if you're sweating, you're nervous, you got a green mamba in front of you, you know, this is sweat resistant. So it's not gonna slip out of your hand. Pretty good product, but I don't have any deadly venomous snakes. I do have a mangrove snake, so I do want to get a shot of her. She won't be eating on camera, but I just put three fuzzy rats, or three rat fuzzies, however you want to name it. This is Athena right here, so. This is Athena right here. So naturally, these are very defensive snakes, which means they try to bite you, they try to strike at you. She really doesn't try to strike too much, which is a good thing for me, because I'm able to handle her, and as you can see, they are boreal, so they climb very well. Not a snake that can kill you, it won't ruin your life, but potentially could ruin your day. So, this is the main girl snake right here. So it's a it's a good snake to get practice with, for the most part, if you wanna handle very venomous snakes, very dangerous venomous snakes. It's a good snake to practice with because they are extremely arboreal, and they, they're tree snakes, so they climb very well. So like mambas and stuff that have that strike range and exceed six feet, which can strike at a good distance. So definitely if this is a green mamba, I probably wouldn't have let it come that close to my hand, but this is a mildly venomous snake. So if I'm not allergic to her venom, then it really won't serve a purpose. And also I would have to let her chew on me to envenomate me and I don't plan on doing so. As you can see, she's about six, six and a half feet, and it may be better for me to just not use a snake hook because she's not a very hot snake, so there's not a very high risk. Now, you don't want to get bit by any snake, especially one that is venomous. I don't think I'm risking much. So this is a, a mangrove snake that comes from the mangrove. So naturally, as I mentioned, they're very defensive, which means they try to bite you, but as you can see, she doesn't really try to bite too much. But you can see those small little glands right here. Those are the venom glands. You can see they're bulging out on the side. You see those tongue flicks? That means she's inquisitive. She's trying to see what's going on. And she looks venomous. These are in the cat snake family, which is why they have the eyes like that in the, in the way their, their face is shaped. The scientific name of this snake is Boiga dendrophilia. Mangrove snake all the way from the mangroves of Asia, but they live in the trees above the swamps and everything. And I'm pretty sure they primarily feed on birds, not so much rodents, because they primarily eat birds, they're boreal, so there's no rodents near the swamp or in trees. They're eating animals that probably land on trees and that occasionally are near swamp areas. Extremely arboreal, which means has the ability to climb very well. So it'd be nothing for this snake to strike me in the face right now because it has the length and it has the quickness. This is a good snake to practice with because it has the same capabilities as like black mambas and king cobras to be able to strike back on their tail. They have the ability to lift their body up and strike at where their tail is. So it'd be nothing for her to bite me, but the good thing for me is that she is not an extremely toxic snake and a bite from her won't be life threat. Otherwise, I would not be free handling her. Yo, so we're about to feed Lucy. So kind of want to disclose to you all something. Lucy was actually named after my late grandmother, Lucy Bird. This is my snake hook. Probably wondering why do I have a snake hook for a non-venomous snake? Well, it's because Lucy is tap trained. So I'm gonna demonstrate what tap trains mean. Tap trains means that in order to let her know when I open her cage that there's no food, that she's not getting ready to be fed, I tap her head with the snake hook. 
So that lets her know that there is no food, right? But this is gonna be a little bit contradicting because I'm actually gonna feed her in this video. But I, I wanna show you guys. So I tapped her with the snake hook, right? So she knows there's no food. So watch when I reach in and grab her. She knows that there's no food because I've conditioned her to know that there's no need for a feeding response when I tap her. Don't strike at me, I'm not a rat. And guess what, I don't smell like a rat. So I even show y'all can grab her face. I raised her from a hatchling. So it's not that she's trained, right? Cause you can't train reptiles. But what you can do is condition them. Also known as tame, you can tame them. So with that being said, in the wild, you probably wouldn't be able to go up to a Colombian red tail boa constrictor and grab it by the face, right? And I'm not doing this to provoke the animal, I'm doing this for education. I'm showing you all how tame my snakes are, right? I have some more tame than others, but I raised her from a hatchling. You guys can see how tame she is. Even with the smell of rats in here, I can grab her face no response, right? So it's pretty tame snake. Just for educational purposes, I wanna show you the difference between a snake that thinks no food is around versus here in a few seconds, me show you when I put a rat in the cage and she gets that scent. They're totally two different things. As you can see, this is a harmless snake. I can put my face in her face and there's no need for a bite, you know. And she can do pretty good damage at this size with her teeth, right? They have rows of teeth and they can cause a pretty bad bite. But I don't smell like a rat, I'm not a rat. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you the difference in what type of snake and what type of response you receive from when there's a rat in the room. It's totally different from this. This is like, hey, I'm gonna hang out with you, buddy. I just wanna see what's going on. I'm gonna crawl on your back. I don't mind if you touch me. I don't mind being handled. I wanna be out. I'm trying to be social. You can grab my face. I don't take that as defense because I've been knowing you my whole life, you know? And you can see even when I grab her face, the teeth are almost exposed. But she has no interest in biting me. Why? Because she's been conditioned to, to not bite humans. There's no reason for it. I haven't harmed her once. I've never harmed her. Animals do everything they do for a reason. They're not as high on the cognitive level of we are as humans, but they can still think. Snakes are mostly defensive. Most people are bitten by snakes from trying to mess or interacting with a snake. They're not some mindless creatures. If you're not a rat, they don't want to eat you. Based on what people will tell you, you can't grab a snake by the head without getting bitten. I'm literally restricting her movement, right? I'm grabbing her face. Why is she not biting me if she's a, a mindless creature? Why, she, why haven't she biting, bitten me yet, right? Because she's stinking. All the interactions from her being a hatchling, I've never done anything to harm her, so why would she bite me? No, we're gonna see a drastic difference when I put this extra large slash jumbo rat in a cage of her, and we're gonna see a totally different snake. This is human interaction. I'm gonna show you rodent interaction. Stay tuned, show you guys right now. I think this is the jumbo. These snakes right here, man, they eat rats, man. Oh. It's live rodents, man. I want these animals to have a long, virtuous life. I feel like the best results is feeding them live prey, man. So without further ado, man, we're gonna get right into it. This closer, I love all animals, but I'm not a big fan of rodents. They're just not clean animals, right? You like clean stuff. I was thinking about breeding my own rodents and having my own rodent supply where I wouldn't have to purchase rodents to feed to my animals. So dude is open, Shit. but we gonna, we gonna see- Are you gonna let the Lucy? We gonna see Lucy and see what Lucy is ready to do oh, with this shoot. rodent, right? She not gonna play no games. Once that scent gets in the air, I'm gonna protect myself with this top of this cage so she don't look up here like, are you a rodent? Cause she smell it. You about to get a totally different snake. This ain't no normal, this ain't the Lucy you just seen. This ain't the, ooh, look, see, look, yeah. look at Allen Iverson striking. That's food in the air. Put it on Allen Iverson right there. Yeah, that's AI right there. That dude don't play neither. The rat is way bigger than him. And look, he not sparing nothing. That is the feeding response from reptiles. They don't play games, man. So I'm gonna get this snake cooking here and I'm gonna just manipulate her towards the rat. You know, 
so we can get her a little bit more focused on the rat, right? We're gonna let her, now we're gonna let them senses flow, right? She not gonna play no games, dude. This is about to be over with in a couple seconds, man. They see the rat not moving because the rat knows what's going on. But this is a part of life, right? Okay, so now what we wanna do, okay, she smells the scent, right? They don't see how we see, right? Because she would see the rat if that was the case. They rely on senses. So what I'm gonna do is get a reaction out of the rat, right? Which is gonna cause a feeding response. If I cause the rat to move, then she's gonna know there's a moving rodent, a small rodent big enough for me to eat. So now it's over with. So now she's following that scent. Okay, it's like, okay, now it's like, okay, a rodent moving. Okay, now. And that's typically how that goes. Boa constrictors don't really waste time. She's not gonna waste time feeding her. She's gonna get right to it. That's how boa constrictors move their extreme feeders. They have some of the strongest feeding responses that I've ever witnessed. And this is not suffocation, by the way. This is not suffocation. This process where a constrictor grabs a rat is called asphyxiation, right? Every time the mammal breathes, the constrictor squeezes tighter. That's not being suffocated, that's been asphyxiated. And basically it's the, the processes in which reptiles that are constrictors kill their prey. All right, guys, so we're getting ready to feed Allen Iverson. So if you know anything about Allen Iverson, this is my most defensive snake. He's the, the one that strikes at you every time you walk past the cage. He's the one that hisses, that doesn't want to be touched. So I'm working with him, right? I'm trying to make him less defensive over time, but we haven't crossed over that threshold or that boundary yet. So my boy Allen Iverson has not yet crossed over. Pause. So with that being said, he used to be a very, very friendly boa constrictor. I used to be able to hold him with both hands at all times, pause. But with that being said, now he has changed. Now he is extremely defensive now that he has kind of reached maturity. And he doesn't want to talk, man. The guy's all business. So I'm going to show y'all what it looks like when we put a rodent in the cage with him. Like I said, the guy's all business. We're feeding Lucy. He was striking at an extra large rat four times his size. So. That lets you know what type of timing he's on. Viewer's discretion is advised. Boa constrictors don't waste a lot of time. Asphyxiation in its finest. So, you can manipulate the snake in the, the rodent once it grabs, because it's not gonna let go. So if I want that, if I had to displace, it's easy to do once, it's, once it grabs the rodent, because it's not gonna let go, right? So if I need to move it on the other side, I can very well do that, right? It's not gonna let go. So I can manipulate the cage. I can straighten things out, you know. There's beauty in everything, right? Next. We're gonna get into some of my ball python. Right, these are my breeders. Um, as you can see, this is Lucky up here who ate for us, who demonstrated how to take down and do Taekwondo. That was Lucky, right? That was a little dude, right? We wanna see Duchess do Taekwondo, right? It's a little more aggressive and a little more right to the, to the point, you know what I'm saying? It's always a little bit exciting, right? But I do have respect for the animals that are being euthanized here, right? I'm not just an animal killer. I don't like to see animals die. However, I do like to see the animals that I purchased and invested into thrive. So with that being said, we're gonna get right into feeding Duchess. We're gonna start off with my biggest ball python, the mother of six that passed away eight months ago, and my first ball python, my beautiful girl, Duchess. So now we're feeding Duchess, okay, this is a large rat. So Duchess is ready. Duchess is ready. I had to get back, because I didn't want to be a part of that. And ball pythons, as sweet as ever, never strike at you, never hiss at you, nothing. But you see, when a rat is introduced, it hit different. 
a rodent is being disposed of in a manner that is unpleasant. However, it's necessary as a part of nature. So now we're doing Sea Breezy, man. The dude is hungry. In times of resources, paid a decent ticket for this guy. And um, he has a little bit of a wobble, but this is my powerhouse male, Chris Brown right here. He is a bamboo bumblebee, right? The guy is spider, the guy is pastel, the guy is bamboo, and I think heterozygous on fire. So the guy is a powerhouse, right? I think he's very hungry right now and it's time to feed him, so. See that? Hold on, hold on. And so, for some reason, every time you clean these guys' cage, they flip their water bowl. It's kind of like the water bowl is almost like the toilet for these guys. Anytime you clean their cage and get a fresh, clean water bowl, they go to the bathroom and flip their water bowl. Like this video, you feel like the water bowl that you use for your reptile cage is the toilet for real. This is my girl, Aisha. See, she's already giving off a feeding response. Her head poking out, so you know what she mean. I wouldn't try to go, hey, Aisha Curry. Hey, do you want to be pet right now? Do you want to be held? No, she means business. This is a feeding response. I gotta kind of get her back, you know, back up, back up. This ain't no rat right now, not yet, okay? Give me some room. All right, so we got somebody for my boy. All right. All right, she's never eaten a large before. Let's see what she does. She's ready for a large for sure. Okay, yeah, he's by your tail. Okay. And don't buy, no, I don't want no problems. I don't want any problems. If you look, yeah, go look for your tail. Go look for That was a large rodent. She's never eaten a large rodent before. But as you can see, it's not a problem. She knows Taekwondo as well. Get out, cuz. He getting out. <laughs> Ooh, the last one, man. So. so, this is the girl Lilo. Last but not least, see what she does. I don't think she ever ate a rat that big, so she was a little skeptical at first. Alright you all, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Go check me out on TikTok at lavish underscore exotics one. And check me out on Instagram at lavish underscore exotics one. But thank you guys again. Thank you for watching my channel. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be dropping some more content soon. Been busy with my work schedule, but I'm trying to make YouTube my number one priority. Unfortunately, sometimes real life takes place and I'm not able to record. I want to let you guys know that I am dedicated to keeping you guys updated on what going on with the quality of my animals and making sure they're able to live a luxurious life and making sure that they're able to live a quality life and they're able to get the best meals possible and they're able to be in the, the best suitable enclosures. I'm dedicated to doing that for my animals and if you're a dedicated follower to making sure that your animals are, are taken care of in the best quality way possible. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be dropping great content. I want to thank you guys. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I am out. Thank you for watching.